Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a topic a lot of people have been asking about in the tech industry. What will be the most important technologies for DevOps and cloud engineering over the next five years? With tech evolving so quickly, it's crucial to stay ahead of the game and know where to focus your skills. So let's get into what tools and trends are worth paying attention to and how you can prepare for the future. To forecast what technologies will be essential, we need to consider a few major trends. Automation, cloud native platforms, security, and AI integration. But there are also some wildcard innovations that could change the way we work in DevOps and cloud engineering. So let's go ahead and break down the top five technologies and trends I believe will be critical over the next five years. And these aren't just guesses, by the way, they're based on things we're seeing in the industry right now and how things are shaping up in the future. One, automation, infrastructure as code, and GitOps. Automation is the very cornerstone of modern DevOps, whether it's speeding up deployments or improving reliability, it all starts with infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code allows us to manage and provision infrastructure through code, which brings consistency and repeatability across those environments. Tools like Terraform and Ansible have already made really huge impacts by automating the provisioning of infrastructure and their importance is only growing, but there's another layer here that's becoming increasingly popular, GitOps. GitOps is the practice of using Git as the single source of truth for your infrastructure and applications. With tools like Argo CD, you can automatically deploy infrastructure and application changes directly from Git. This adds more transparency and audibility to the automation process, ensuring every change is tracked in your version control system. As teams continue to adopt cloud native architectures, GitOps skills are becoming a must have. But why is mastering these technologies so important? Here's the deal, whether you're working with Terraform, Ansible, Argo, or Pulumi, the core principles of automation and infrastructure management are the same. It doesn't matter whether you're in AWS, Google, or Azure, the key is to understanding how to automate and streamline processes not just the specifics of a particular tool. Think of IAC, infrastructure as code, configuration code, policy as code, compliance as code, GitOps, like learning different programming languages. Once you've mastered the language of automation, you can easily pick up new tools or frameworks. For example, if you're fluent in Terraform or OpenTofu, learning AWS CloudFormation or Pulumi will feel more like a translation exercise rather than learning something entirely new. Vendor agnostic skills are essential because cloud providers and tools will certainly evolve, but the concepts of automation will remain constant. If you're really unsure where to start, focus on the most popular vendor like Terraform for IC or Argo CD for GitOps. And once you're comfortable with those, compare them with other offerings. It's less about the particular tool and more about understanding how to automate infrastructure, efficiently track changes in Git, and provide consistent environments from development all the way through to production. Now let's talk about why this matters to employers. Whether you're being hired by executives or fellow engineers, being fluent in these automation tools allows you to speak directly to their pain points. If you're interviewing with executives, focus on how your skills can help save them money. Automation reduces the need for manual intervention, which cuts down on operational costs. Really, if you can reference a past project where you have automated a process or saved your company significant time or resources, you'll demonstrate your value very clearly. If you're interviewing with other fellow engineers, the conversation of this shifts slightly. Your focus should instead be on how you can save them time. Ask them about their current tool chain and think about optimizations you can introduce. Maybe their current pipelines are running slow or their environment configurations aren't consistent across teams. Then talk about high level automation ideas, like integrating IIC with their existing tools to make processes smoother and faster. Your goal is to show how your expertise can reduce the manual work they're currently doing freeing them up to focus on more critical engineering activities. The most important thing to understand about maintaining a competitive edge in the next five years is this. Be desirable to whoever is hiring you. Put yourself in their shoes and speculate about their pain points. If you're talking to executives, their pain points are very likely financial. How can you help them reduce operational costs and streamline operations? If you're talking to engineers, they're thinking about their workload. How can you help them work more efficiently and eliminate repetitive tasks? In your interview, speak to these pain points. If they're concerned about consistency across environments, QA staging prod, explain how GitOps can bring a new level of control and versioning to their infrastructure. The more you align your skills with these challenges, the more desirable you'll be as a candidate. Two, Kubernetes and container orchestration. Let's just take a moment to consider how far Kubernetes has come on June 6th, 2024, the very first commit of Kubernetes was pushed to GitHub just over 10 years ago. Who could have predicted that Kubernetes, once a small internal Google project, would completely revolutionize the way we build, deploy, and scale applications? In just 10 years, Kubernetes has really redefined what it means to run applications at scale, and its impact on application architecture is nothing short of transformative. Before Kubernetes, deploying applications was much more rigid. Traditional application architectures often depended on dedicated servers, manual configuration, and really limited scalability. 
Kubernetes introduced a new paradigm, allowing applications to be containerized and orchestrated across a dynamic infrastructure. This shift really allowed organizations to decouple their applications from the underlying hardware, making them more flexible, scalable, and much easier to manage. The reason lies in Kubernetes' ability to orchestrate containers at massive scale. Kubernetes simplifies the deployment, scaling, and operation of containerized applications, automating tasks that used to take entire teams to manage. Whether you're running just a few services or even thousands of services, Kubernetes handles the complexity behind the scenes, making sure that your applications run smoothly across distributed systems. It really allows developers to focus on building and deploying code while Kubernetes manages the infrastructure. And because it's cloud agnostic, you can run Kubernetes anywhere, on premise, in the cloud, or even at the edge. But the real power and the future of Kubernetes goes beyond basic container orchestration. We're starting to see advanced use cases emerge like Kubernetes operators. Operators allow you to manage complex stateful applications. Think databases or machine learning pipelines. It does this by encoding operational knowledge into custom controllers. And this takes automation to a whole new level, allowing Kubernetes to manage complex applications the same way it manages stateless ones. Another emerging trend is multi-cluster management. As organizations scale, they often need to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters across different regions or even different environments. Tools like Rancher and Kubesphere are making it easier to oversee these multi-cluster deployments, allowing for better disaster recovery, geographic redundancy, and workload distribution. Now, let's also talk about a really exciting use case, Kubernetes at the edge. As edge computing becomes more powerful with the rise of IoT devices, smart factories, and autonomous systems, there's a need to run Kubernetes in a more constrained environment. That's where K3S comes in. K3S is a lightweight version of Kubernetes designed specifically for resource-constrained environments like IoT gateways and remote servers. The beauty of K3S is that it brings the same container orchestration power of Kubernetes to places that don't have the luxury of massive data centers, whether it's managing IoT devices in a factory or running applications on the edge in a remote location, K3S makes it possible to extend Kubernetes to the edge of the network where low latency and local processing are really important. So if you're working in cloud engineering or DevOps, being fluent in Kubernetes is no longer optional. It's really non-negotiable. The sheer flexibility of Kubernetes combined with its rapidly growing ecosystem means that organizations are using it to solve problems that go beyond just scaling applications. From automating complex workflows with operators to running multi-cluster environments and deploying workloads at the edge, Kubernetes is becoming the backbone of modern infrastructure. But here's the thing, while Kubernetes is certainly complex, the core principles, containerization, orchestration, and automation are universal across different platforms. Whether you're using Google Kubernetes Engine, Azure Kubernetes Service, Elastic Kubernetes Service, or OpenShift or on-prem, the core skills you develop at Kubernetes will apply across all these platforms. Focus on mastering the foundational concepts container orchestration, service discovery, scaling, and management, and you'll be able to work in any environment. Once you're confident in core Kubernetes, you can explore other orchestration tools or more specialized solutions. Three, serverless architectures versus Kubernetes. Another major trend that is really here to stay is serverless computing. Platforms like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, and Google Cloud Functions allow developers to run code without provisioning or managing the servers themselves. The appeal is simple. You only pay for what you use, and your application scales seamlessly based on demand. Serverless is perfect for event-driven systems and microservice architectures, where you don't need to manage the infrastructure manually. So how does this compare to container orchestration platforms like EKS and AKS? Let's break it down. Infrastructure management. With serverless, there's no infrastructure to manage at all. You focus solely on the code. EKS, AKS, on the other hand, requires managing clusters, nodes, and container orchestration. So you'll need a deeper understanding of how that infrastructure works. Scaling. Serverless platforms scale automatically. You don't need to configure anything. With EKS, AKS, Scaling is still automated, but you'll need to define how the containers scale and manage load balancing across clusters. Cost. Serverless operates on a pay-as-you-go model, meaning you're only charged for the execution time. EKS, AKS involves paying for the compute instances where your clusters run, but might also come with higher fixed costs. Use case. Serverless shines in event-driven applications. Think real-time data processing or microservices that trigger based on specific events. Kubernetes, on the other hand, is ideal for long-running, complex applications that require fine-grained control over the environment and scaling. So why do both matter? The truth is both serverless and Kubernetes have their place. If you want to move fast and minimize infrastructure management, serverless is really a great fit. But if you need more control over your environment or are running complex multi-service applications, EKS, AKS might be the better choice. The key is to understand when to use each approach, and sometimes the best architecture is actually a mix of both. For DevSecOps, security automation, and policy as code. We can't talk about the future of DevOps without addressing security, and that's where DevSecOps comes in. The DevSecOps movement is really about integrating security into every part of the development 
development life cycle rather than treating it as an afterthought. This approach is gaining serious traction and in the next five years, security automation will be an even bigger focus. Here are some key tools and concepts you need to know. Automated vulnerability scanning in your CI-CD pipelines. Tools like SNCC, Aqua Security, and Trivi can automatically scan your code and container images for vulnerabilities as part of the deployment process. With tools like HashiCorp's Vault, you can securely manage secrets, encryption keys, and sensitive data directly within your infrastructure as code workflows. Another important trend to watch is policy as code. Just like how we're used to infrastructure as code to automate and manage our infrastructure, policy as code allows us to write and enforce security and compliance policies using code. Tools like Open Policy Agent and Sentinel are being used to define and enforce policies across your infrastructure and applications ensuring compliance with security standards and organizational policies. In addition to automated security and policy enforcement, monitoring will play a critical role in DevSecOps over the next five years. It's not enough to just deploy secure infrastructure, you need to ensure that it stays secure. That's where security observability comes into play. Tools like Datadog, Prometheus, and Dynatrace are already incorporating security metrics into their monitoring solutions. We're also seeing a rise in AI-driven anomaly detection where machine learning algorithms detect unusual behavior in real time and help identify potential security incidents before they escalate. Five, AI and machine learning in DevOps. Now let's talk about the final big trend that will shape DevOps and cloud engineering over the next five years, AI and machine learning. AI is already making waves in DevOps, but it's important to note that how we fully integrate AI into the DevOps lifecycle is still being determined. The potential is massive, but we're really in the early stages of understanding the most effective ways to leverage these technologies. Tools like Dynatrace, Datadog, and Splunk are already using AI-driven monitoring to optimize performance and detect anomalies. These platforms are able to analyze huge volumes of telemetry data in real time and can alert you to potential issues long before a human could spot them. AI is helping teams identify patterns in system performance, flagging abnormal behavior, or predicting outages before they happen. We're also seeing AI used to optimize CI-CD pipelines. For example, AI algorithms can suggest ways to improve deployment times, identify bottlenecks in the process, or even automate parts of the pipeline that traditionally required human intervention. Tools like Harness are using AI to roll back faulty deployments automatically, reducing downtime and ensuring smoother production releases. So where is AI in DevOps and cloud engineering heading in the next five years? Here's what we could see. Proactive incident management. AI could move beyond just monitoring to predicting and preventing incidents in real time. Imagine your system detecting a failure days before it happens, automatically provisioning additional resources or rerouting traffic to avoid an outage. Automated root cause analysis. When incidents do happen, AI could automate the entire process of identifying the root cause, reducing the need for manual investigation. This could save engineers countless hours spent on troubleshooting and debug. Autonomous CI-CD pipelines. In the future, AI could handle even more complex tasks, like automatically adjusting your CI-CD pipeline for optimal performance based on real-time data. It might predict the best time to deploy, identify risky changes, and even dynamically adjust deployment strategies to minimize impact on users. It's exciting to imagine a future where AI is not just a tool to assist engineers, but a true partner in the decision-making process helping optimize performance, improving security, and reducing the overall time to resolution. All that said, it's important to keep in mind that we're still figuring out the best ways to integrate AI into DevOps and cloud engineering. The potential is certainly there, but the technology is still evolving, and so are the use cases. Right now, AI is mostly used for monitoring and optimization, but there's a lot of work to be done before we can fully rely on AI for more complex autonomous tasks. All right, let's recap the five most important technologies for the next five years if you are a cloud or DevOps engineer. First, automation and infrastructure as code with tools like Terraform are essential to streamline processes processes, eliminate human error, and scale efficiently. If you're not automating, you're already falling behind. Second, Kubernetes and container orchestration will remain crucial for managing and scaling cloud-native applications. It's not just about loaded Kubernetes, it's about mastering the ecosystem around Kubernetes. Third, serverless architectures like Lambda and Azure Functions are perfect for event-driven applications and microservices. If an organization wants to reduce overhead and focus on building, serverless is the way to go. Fourth, DevSecOps and security automation should be at the core of everything you do. From policy as code to automated vulnerability scanning, securing your infrastructure from the ground up is no longer optional. And finally, fifth, AI and machine learning are going to transform how we manage and scale our infrastructure. From predictive maintenance to optimizing CI-CD pipelines, AI is going to play a huge role in DevOps over the next five years. So to recap, whether you're looking to save time, reduce costs, or enhance security, these five technologies, automation with infrastructure as code, Kubernetes, serverless, DevSecOps, and AI in DevOps are the key areas to focus on. Mastering these will put you ahead of the curve and make you invaluable to any organization. But now I want to hear from you. What technologies do you think will dominate the DevOps and cloud engineering landscape over the next five years? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more insights on building a career in tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.